Hi guys, it's Amy, your golf coach. Have you ever had a situation where you drive it so beautifully, probably the best drive of your life, you hit it really long, straight down the middle, and you have about 100 yards or so into the green now. So you're really pumped, you wanna get it close and get a birdie, and you go up there all excited, and you cold top it. Wow, wow, wow. I've had similar situations happen quite a bit with me and I'm sure you guys have experienced it as well. Um, so for those of you who have been struggling topping the golf ball, I have prepared a complete guide to stop topping the ball series. Today is the first episode. I'm going to help you to eliminate your thin shots and start uh, compressing the ball beautifully so you can get some piercing ball flight, gain distance and accuracy see all at the same time. Let's get started. Ta-da! Amy Fine means making golf simple, fun, and effective. Now, back to the golf lesson. So what is topping the ball or hitting it thin? is when you see the golf ball here, when you catch kind of like the top part of the ball and it goes super low, you can lose distance. When it's a cold day, you can actually feel the vibration in your hands and your hands hurt, right? So you've all experienced it. So that's what thinning or topping the golf ball means. There are many different reasons why you would top it. Um, number one would be the lifting of the head too early. A lot of golfers tend to want to see where the ball goes and you tend to lift the head way before you hit the golf ball. Or in the downswing, your hips are supposed to lead, but if your hips aren't you know, firing through as hard, then you're lacking power and you're gonna lose distance and your body's very smart. So your body's going to want to try and make up that power and the arms take over to power through. That's when your grip gets super tense and you end up not able to bottom out that club. You're not able to go descending below into the golf ball and the club just kind of hovers over the ground and you end up catching the top of the ball. Or you might be starting the downswing using the hips, but it may be in an incorrect way. Usually an incorrect hip turn would be when you are trying to power through so hard and you end up spinning out and you can see from the side when you spin out then you end up early extending meaning your hips come forward like this when your hips thrust forward now the distance from your chest to the golf ball gets farther away and you're obviously going to catch the top of the golf ball so out of all these different ways you can top it, we're going to today focus on the lifting of the head that's making you top it. If you look at the professionals hit from the down the line, when they're set up, they usually draw a line on top of their head going this way. This indicates where your head starts. And the pros usually keep it right under that line throughout the whole swing until like post impact area. If you have seen my golf lesson, you know that what post impact is, right? If this is a clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, three o'clock, impact happens at about six o'clock. And then as your club releases and the club is pointing at four o'clock, I call that the post impact position. And professionals stay nice and low throughout the whole backswing and the downswing until they hit that post impact. And obviously when you're following through, your head does go up but that's the uh, pattern you see with the professionals. So let me go ahead and show you that. Head stays nice and low throughout the whole swing until post impact. That's what we want, but with a lot of the amateurs, when we draw a line on top of the head, uh, you can see either one of these two patterns. In the backswing, you might go up over that line already and then stay up there in the downswing. Or the second case is when you draw a line, you stay beautifully in the downswing and then on the way down, you get up this way, right? Today, my goal is to keep you staying low throughout the whole swing and not lift up your head too early uh, to eliminate those thin shots. 
and there are many different ways of fixing this as well. First thing, you've probably done this, uh, done this a lot, hold your head still and then your body will adjust to that lotus eventually and then your head will stay still. That's one of the ways. The other way you can actually work on your lower body movement and that is eventually going to get your head to stay nice and steady during the swing. They all work, but today I'm going to amify it for you guys, make, meaning making simple, fun and effective and give you the easiest drill, but most effective drill there is. You can do one of the three. The first one would be if you have someone uh, that practices with you, you can ask them to help you out. Then you can have them like hold your head using shafts and you can hit golf balls with their help. That's gonna help you to keep the head super steady. Or the second option, if you don't have anyone with you, then you can use the noodles and alignment sticks to get that noodle to go right next to your ear and that's going to really help you understand how your head moves during the swing and be able to keep it steady all by yourself without anybody's help. And the third option is my favorite. This is a little bit more discreet than the alignment sticks and the noodles. <laughs> uh, the stead head. If you use the stead head, it's very, nobody's really gonna know what you're doing, but you'll be able to hold that head still all by yourself. Ta-da! So here it is. This is the stead head and all you do is clip it on your hat like this. And I know, you know, because it's kind of close to your eyes, it'll be a little bit double vision, but you will end up using your dominant eye to line up this cone to the golf ball. So you line up and that yellow cone is right next to the ball. If you keep lifting your head up, you will know because that cone is going to move right away. So this really helps you to really focus on keeping your eyes on the golf ball as long as possible. So at first when you're doing this, it's really not going to be easy to keep your head still. So I would start with like 50% speed, just hitting, just making contact, light contact, 100% focus on keeping the head steady. Don't worry about how you hit it. It'll be kind of like this. And I've hit that kind of heavy, don't worry about it. You're so used to going up when you stay down you might catch it fat like i did but the more practice you put into it your body will adjust your hands will adjust to the lowness and you will not be catching it thin or fat <laughs> which is ideal right and then once you get comfortable you know the ball strike gets a little bit better and you feel better about staying low then we're gonna add a little bit of speed and go up to like 80 percent like this okay focus on the cone Oh, that head was super steady. <laughs> so I really want you to try this drill out. It's really going to help you to be able to hold your head down without anybody's support or help. You can do it all by yourself, which is a very tough thing to do for, you know, keeping your head still. Um, this is probably the simplest drill that's most effective in the short amount of time, because once you get this going, let's say you're hitting it thin, maybe 10 out of 10, but after doing a little bit of this drill, you'll feel that you're only topping maybe six or seven out of 10 and 30, 40% improvement in that short amount of time, I can tell you guys is a huge improvement. <laughs> So give this a go. If you get used to keeping your head down and your body starts adjusting, in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about the shoulder plane that's going to really keep your head even more still. And shoulder plane is a very important part of the golf swing that you don't really hear too much about. So it's going to be a very valuable lesson. To get ready for that, I want you to work on keeping your head still for now. Thank you for golfing with me and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah! <laughs>